Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for this week's roundtable, we've got the unflappable Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? Doing good. Happy to be here. Great. We've got the indomitable Tate Big Papa Litchfield. What's up, Tate? Not much. How's everybody doing today? Great. Great. We've got the Zen master. Very, I can't think of another I word that's, that equates to like very chill and uh, centered. Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? Doing great. How are you? I'm pulse is normal. Respiration is fine. Shirt, by the way. Thank you. If you. Yeah. For those of you not watching the video, I'm wearing Eric Peterson's <laughs> shirt that he got me that says Kaizen. And it's, it's really good looking shirt actually. It looks like a transformer shirt. Yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> That's basically saying how cool it is. And last but not least, we all know him. We all know. We all love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Today's podcast is sponsored by the amazing, incredible, only service out there that actually automates your no payments, geekpay.io, the only set it and forget it system in the world that takes both forms of payment, ACH and credit card. If the ACH fails, it'll charge your credit card on, on file as a backup. Getting paid, boys, geekpay.io. Get your first note free today at thelandgeek.com forward slash geekpay. All right, guys, we've got a lot to talk about here. Let's start with our first topic. And this is a common topic, I think, uh, for, you know, all types of people. So the question is, why do some people sell or are or, or currently selling? And why are some not currently selling? So Tate, tell the story about Charles and, uh, and Mimi. As right. These are like two people that recently are selling. Yeah, I mean, Charles has been in the business for, I don't know, what would you say, two, maybe a month and a half now? He just came back from boot camp. And, yeah, he, uh, he's, in, he's in coaching. Yep. And he was, he messaged me yesterday and said that he sold one property. And I said, Oh, that's great. And about 20 minutes later, I got another message from him saying, I sold another one. And I said, he goes, I'm kind of freaking out right now. And I said, yeah, why are you freaking out? This is the greatest news ever. You know? And I said, so what's your total? He sold six properties in one week, Mark. Wow. Wow. He, he sold his first one at boot camp. Yeah. So, I mean, it goes back to that boot camp high, right? That motivation that we leave from, but it doesn't stop there, right? So Mimi last night on office hours tells me that she did, she had like the greatest Monday of her life. And basically she sold another property for cash for $6,000. Now boot camp, she got like three grand cash from a guy that wants to spend, or six grand cash. Six grand. He got six grand cash. And then she's got that guy, same guy wants to spend 30,000 with her cash so was this a different buyer i think so yeah but it's pretty good monday it's a really good monday i'll take that so you know and she was saying on the cash deal she did like 230 percent profit on it i mean i'm pretty taking good. that deal all day long but it was it was kind of it was an exciting office hours just because we had so much good news to talk about but these guys are having sales the market is hot yeah, I mean, we're selling. Scott, are you selling? Yeah, yeah, we're we're busy. Mike, are you selling? Yeah, I got one ready to sell on eBay right now. I love eBay. What? I mean, <laughs> we should be selling more on eBay. Eric, how about you? Are you, are you selling? Stay off eBay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sold one mentality. yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> you sold one yesterday. Okay, so yeah. so why why are some people selling? Like, what's what's the big difference? And and some people are complaining. Hey, I've got these seven properties that are not selling. What do those people that aren't selling, what do they need to do so they can sell, Mike Zeno? I would say many times they have to stop thinking they can create their own market. They feel, I mean, we do this, when we do this exercise at boot camp, it's one of the best, uh, one of the best things we do. We do a lot of awesome things, right? But we do these group exercises, you know, and they all come up with these different headlines for the ads and then they come up with their pricing. 
And what makes it breaks these teams when we go through the review is the pricing. Some of them are like, oh yeah, we're going to get, you know, all this money, all our money back on the down. Then we're going to have like a $500 dog fee. And, and it's like all these wonderful things that they want, but the market would never support it. So sometimes there's that misalignment between, you know, you have a property that will sell, but maybe it just won't sell what you, for what you think it will. You'll still get your money in the long term, right? I mean, that comes down to buying it right. It's another discussion. But the thing is, you can sell these properties if you identify what the market is. And then when I go on eBay, I just look and see what's selling and where it's selling and the price it's selling for, and I just match it. I don't try to do better, and I'm not going to do worse. I'm just going to go right there where it's at, and I'm going to hit it. I love it. Eric Peterson, what do you think the difference is? Well, I would say, I mean, there's any number of factors. I think that, um, you know, first of all, where the property is, is going to make a difference. There's certain areas that, uh, you know, get hot and they start selling fast and, and other areas that are slower. Um, not that you can't buy and sell in those, you know, not hot areas, but it just might take more time. Um, and then, you know, I mean, of course you have advertising, you know, are you doing enough advertising for your properties? Um, that's, that's a huge factor. Um, we talk about 50 ads to sell a property. I mean, if you're only putting 25 ads out a week or five ads out a week, you know, it's going to take you a lot longer to, uh, to find those sales. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that is a good point. And, you know, it's, we don't talk about it enough, I don't think, about how some areas do get hot and some other areas, they take forever. I mean, you know, Tate, remember the, the deal in Arizona? Oh, yeah. They sold, but they just sold slowly. We made money on them, too. Let's not forget that. But it took, it wasn't a 30-day, you know, flip. Right. And, now, and I'll make the argument they all sell. They all sell. I've never been stuck with a piece of property. Eric, ever stuck? Not yet. Tate, ever stuck? Nope. Scott, stuck? I mean, I've got a property that uh, I've owned for a year now. Um, it hasn't sold. Guess what state it's in? Tennessee, Eric. <laughs> I, I, no, and this is like, this does is it have one a POA? Of the, uh, it does. See? It okay. Does. Now you're going against the grain buying I, in a POA. That's right. You know what I, but you know what I did is I, um, but see, I'm not worried about it, Mark, because um, okay, it hasn't sold in a year. I'm not freaked out about it because essentially, I mean, I've even debated, do I even want to sell this property or not? Because it's in a beautiful area of Tennessee. I paid like $1,500 for almost an acre in Tennessee, road access, like paved road access. The POA is like, I don't know, $150 um, a year. So big, big deal, right? Like it's not that big of a deal. But I mean, I think that you have to set your time horizon correctly. Like, you know, like, like we've been saying, one, it may not sell to your time frame, and it may not sell for your dollar amount. You know, like how many times that, did we go to boot camp and everybody's like, well, we want $3,000 down. You know, it doesn't matter what you want. It matters what the market wants. Give the market what they want and it will be gone fast. Yeah. Well, by the way, speaking of uh, big downs, listen to this box I just got. get this purchased a lot for 3000 uh, actually pre-sold it uh, got 4500 down and we'll get 380 a month for 12 months that's a crazy good sale all right so you know dude buddy dude buddy scott Boston's <laughs> dude buddy. making it rain but you know how does he get in 4500 down you know why because scott todd taught us all the trick and you've got to go to boot camp to learn it, but <laughs> it's magical. All right, Mike Zano, you ever been stuck with a piece of land? <laughs> I was just thinking two things. That's an awesome sale, and gee whiz, that phone of yours is huge. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> you can't say that. You can't. I've never been stuck with a property, but I can say that there are times where I got worried that I was going to, right? And then I kind of off them lower than I should. And lo and behold, the advertising kicks in. Now everybody wants them. So there's no rush, right? And you know, sometimes you feel like you got to take, like, geez, I better get rid of this right now. Uh, I'll take this for it. Still make 
you know, double your money, whatever it is. But then all of a sudden, the advertising is like the, like the mailing. It has to kick in over time. And sometimes all of a sudden, these, as soon as you get rid of the property, here they all come looking for it. So, no, I haven't got stuck with a property. I've, I've probably sold properties on bad timing because of my impatience, but I've never got stuck with a property. Right, right. Tate, what were you going to say? Well, I was just going to say, like, everybody's, you know, pretty confident here. And I was talking with Charles about it. And, uh-oh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry. Back. So I was talking with Charles about it, and I said to him, you know, Charles, what are you doing? How are you selling these? And he said, his response was really funny. He says, I'm a Craigslist monster. He said he's just posting anytime he has any you know, extra time to work on the business, he's posting ads and he's just going crazy. And so if you're not selling, are you being a Craigslist monster? Are you automating it? Right. And even if you're not automating it, are you posting ads manually? What's the deal? Yeah, I think, I think it does come down to, you know, being ubiquitous. And if you can't sell on Craigslist, look at Facebook buy sell groups, go there. That's not working you know, keep emailing your list. Are you sending out the neighbor letters? Are, are you, you know, are you doing something every single day? And then ultimately, if you can't get it sold in 30 days, you know, have a call with Mike Zano. How do you sell on eBay and get it sold on eBay? A sale is a sale. Um, yeah, you're not gonna get the highest price on eBay, but so what? You can still get the down payment and do terms, you know, bid on the, bid on the down payment. Uh, Mike, you don't like that? Uh, no, I'm always at the bottom of the totem pole. If that doesn't work, go to eBay. And see Mike. <laughs> I, Call Mike. Uh, Mark, oh. I, think that, <laughs> I think that people sometimes also miss a key thing. And, you know, like find other people that are buying properties in the area. You could call them neighbor letters, but find other people that are buying properties or that have bought properties in that area. It doesn't have to be right next door. You know, sometimes people will buy properties in a general area, call them up, email them, find, find out, get their contact information and sell it to them. I mean, there's always buyers somewhere. No, I, I a hundred percent agree. And it, it comes down to a combination of effort, grit, persistence, and faith, right? You just know, okay, if I keep messing with this ad, I change the headline. I, I mess with the pricing. Maybe I lower the down and I raise the entire price. Maybe I lower the down, I lower the monthly, but I raise the entire price. Maybe I need to raise the, the down and lower the monthly. I mean, you've got to try different things. You can't just put up a couple ads and think, oh, this is going to sell, right? Uh, Scott, remember when we talked about Coke at, at boot camp? How many ads yeah. has Coke put up? That, that they, they were running like at one time they were running like hundreds of different spots with thousands of different impressions, you know, so tens of thousands. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, be a mini Coke, you don't, and it doesn't cost you anything. Right. But you've got to be out there. You've got to be a monster. Uh, anything, anybody have anything else they want to add to that? Just because it's a simple model doesn't mean it's effortless and it's easy. Right. I, I mean, I Mark, if if you go to the to the mastermind group, to the Land Geek Mastermind group, and I don't know, I guess you could search and you type in like Scott Todd and uh, I don't know, like um, neighbor letters or something like that. You'll find a post from when I had been doing this business. I don't know, like uh, less than a month. Okay, and I literally went in there and I'm like, okay, guys, I've posted on Craigslist, I've reposted it. I sent out my neighbor letters and I listed on Landon Farm. No response. What do I do now? <laughs> right? It, I'm, I'm like embarrassed. I even like thought that way, but I thought literally like I just posted in a couple places and the buyers would come a running and that's just not the way that it is. It takes a lot of effort uh, to, to, get the, uh, to get the word out. Yeah. I mean, speaking of a lot of effort, you're putting a lot of effort in bringing that traffic to landmoto.com. I can't right. tell you the last time I've, I thought, oh, I'm going to put an ad up on Land and Farm or Lands of America. It's all about Land Moto. It's Land Moto all the time. Eric, yeah, how's Land Moto going for you? It's going good. I've sold um, one property so far, but right. nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Tate, you, you enjoying Land Moto? Loving it. It's so easy. I mean, it's just incredibly easy to post. And so, I mean, it's amazing. 
Scott Todd, let, let's play devil's advocate. Why wouldn't you list on Landmoto? Well, I mean, okay. So look, uh, you know, I'll, let me be a, a critic here of Landmoto. Okay. So um, the one thing that I see is that people, uh, people go on and I'll just be honest, they, they choose the cheapest plan and it's just going to get buried. Right. I'm, I'm even thinking about taking down the, um, the, the two cheapest plans because of, of exposure. The, the reality is, is that the way to do it is to, to do the platinum plan. And you might say, well, of course you might think that way, but with, when you do the platinum plan, you actually get, um, when we'll do like email blast, uh, you actually, you know, can add a property to that email blast to the entire, you know, I don't know, 6,000 buyers that I have on my list. Plus when you're in that platinum plan, what happens is when, when a property comes up every day, we're selecting like a property of the day that we're, we're running Facebook ads on, we're running um, pay-per-click ads on, and we're running Craigslist ads on those kind of those properties of the, of the day. And they run for two to three days, those, those things. So we're driving traffic back to those pieces. And the reality is, is if you're not in that platinum piece, you're just not getting the exposure. So I think it just comes back down to people. I think it comes down to time horizon. Sometimes, you know, if you think that you're gonna just put up a property and make a sale, that's not always the case. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to, for people to kind of see your ad. It's not, it's not instant, you know, like I hate to say it, but if you've ever sold a house with, with a realtor, you think like, Oh my gosh, it's going to be on realtor.com. Everybody's going to come knocking, but the average time to sell a house is about a hundred days. Right. I don't know. Like it, it all depends. So, you know, I think that there's some, some factors in there. Well, I think that's really interesting insight. Uh, especially, for, you know, when you put on your marketer hat, right? You want to invest your marketing dollars to get the most and best exposure. And, you know, and look at it like that. You have to look at it like an investment and not an expense. And Grant Cardone talks about this a lot. He's like, when the economy went down, I doubled down. I, I invested more in marketing when everybody else was, was cutting back on their marketing. And, you know, he 10 x it. So it's, you know, it's just, a, it's just a little mindset shift. Uh, new topic, new topic. How do you deal with the doubters? Maybe it's your spouse, maybe it's your friends, maybe it's your family, but you tell people, hey, I really wanna get into this land investing business or I'm doing this land investing business. And they start saying, oh, I watch HGTV, there's nothing on land. I watch the DIY network, there's no flipping land. Never heard of it doesn't make sense. Land doesn't cash flow. Who wants to buy a no liquid asset? I think you're nuts. Eric Peterson, how do you deal with the doubters? Well, I think the first thing is to show them the results, right? I mean, if, if you've had a sale, um, you know, show the result of that sale, whether it was cash or, or terms. I mean, that's obviously, I mean, that's, that's the simplest way. Um, prior to having a sale, um, it's a little harder, you know, I mean, people are going to have doubt and, you know, chances are you're going to have some doubt yourself just, just getting started in the process. But, um, you know, at that point you got to look to the others that are out there doing it already and the success that they're having. And if you model what you're doing after them, you're going to, you're going to get success as well. Do you have any personal stories that you want to share about when you first started and the doubt and the fear and, you know, maybe a fight with your spouse or something? No, I, I really don't. Um, you know, for me, when I started, um, you know, initially I, I kept it kind of quiet. So, um, you know, a lot of people didn't really know much about what I was doing until I did have that success. Um, and, you know, that was the way I felt comfortable to, to talk about it or bring it up with others. Right. Um, so, so I didn't have one of those stories. I know certainly there's, there's others in the community that have had that experience in, in, uh, trying to convince a spouse or what have you. Um, but I didn't really run into that. Yeah. I mean, after watching battle of the sexes, I think it's, it's tough to be a closet land geeker. And, you know, I think there's a lot of benefits to coming out and, and, you know, just embracing that this is who you are. You're a land investor and be proud of it. And, you know, but it's hard, right? Because society, you know, judges, right? 
And and then you know, oh, you make three hundred to a thousand percent. Sure, let's see the numbers. Right. I mean, there's there's a lot of that out there. Uh, Tate, what about you? You know, I experienced a little bit of it, but uh, you know, a lot of it I noticed came from myself. I was I was kind of worried at first, like, oh, is this really everything that it it should be? I mean, are the people around me really having those results? And once I had them myself, and once I I did a few sales and went full circle on it, I, I realized that it was as good as people say it is. And it does require a lot of work. And I knew right then and there that I didn't care what that, what other people said. I didn't care if they understood the business model and I don't care to this day, I'm going to do it because it works and it allows me to live the lifestyle that I want. And so, you know what, I'm in it for the long run and haters can hate. doesn't matter to me. I got thick skin. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought of Tate this morning when I went on my e-bike ride and I thought, you know, as I was riding that hill and then I just completely didn't have to like have my legs burn. I'm like, Oh, wait a second. Tate's legs are probably burning right now. Did you take a bike ride this morning? Yep. There's no comparison. I yeah. did. Mike's Mike loves this. Mike, you what about you? Compare your, your electric bike to Tate's. Well, Tate's a world-class cyclist. I'm not comparing anything to Tate. I wouldn't say world-class. That's, like, that's like saying, oh, I went swimming today. So did Michael Phelps. I mean, there's no comparison about the two, you the two types wet. of swimming. What's that? You both, got, you both got wet. No, yeah, exactly. You both got wet. All I'm saying is that I enjoy the same type of activity, but not the same I'm level sorry. of intensity. I know. Sorry. The spirit of it is there. And the fact that we could go out and do it this morning is there. The yep, freedom and the flexibility is there. That's about where the, uh, <laughs> that's about where the, the uh, parallels end there, right? Um, so, Tate, did you get a bike ride this morning? Yeah, I did. I did. How many miles? Uh, 40. Okay, I did about two. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so nice here in Vegas right now. You know, it's, I went out at like 7. It was 75 degrees out. It's just beautiful. So, when it's good weather like that, you got to ride your bike. No, I had, it was beautiful weather. And then, you know, <laughs> I had to go get the kids to school. Uh, Mike Zeno, what about you? How do you deal with the doubt, the fear? Uh, you must have had. Yeah, you know, fears, some, uncertainty, doubts. The uncertainty. Um, I think this business is so empowering. But like anything else in life that's empowering, it has to be seasoned. Like, I mean, look, look like a good boxer, right? He's building his way up. If they threw him against like the heavyweight or the world champion, he'd get knocked out, ruin his confidence. And he would never become anything great if you start, you know, if you go too fast, too, too, too quick. So, you know, yeah, keep it close to you, to, to yourself at first, you know, prove it to yourself. And then slowly what happens is you begin to realize like anything else, the more you do something, the more you become it, you become a land investor. And when you become a land investor, when people talk to you, you're not going to shy away from it. It's just a very factual thing. You know, this is what I do. And um, you don't need to have any kind of uh, proof from them. It's a double-edged sword in the beginning, right? You want to tell people what you do in a sense because I think it holds you accountable but also you're going to bring upon yourself there's always those people in life that for whatever reason maybe they're not doing so well or whatever they're just going to throw doubt at you and they're going to throw all this negativity away so it's a difficult prod double-edged sword but I think um you know, like Tate said, a lot of times people have the initial doubts within themselves. But once you kind of get around that and you begin to empower yourself, then slowly you kind of, you know, stand up a little straighter, you talk a little stronger. Like, yeah, I'm a land investor. And you know what? I do buy land. I do sell for 300% or 1,000%, sometimes 200% on a bad day. But we do that, right? So um, I think it's just you have to be seasoning yourself, right? Just take it slow uh, and uh, – this business is empowering. So just prove it to yourself first and then you don't have to worry about proving it to other people. They'll just see the results. Yeah, I think that's interesting because I was going to play devil's advocate about, you know, because you hear, you know, hey, if you're going to want to lose weight, tell as many people as you can. And it'll, it'll hold you accountable, right? Sort of the, I mean, that's like the, the conventional wisdom. Yeah. But, you know, I think you were a closet land geeker. I think, you know, Eric was a closet land geeker. I think we see a lot of closet land geekers and they don't come out of the closet until they get that first sale and I get it. I get it. So which, I mean, which is more important do you think, you know, not having to deal with the doubters or having the accountability or going to flight school and kind of getting both. Yeah. 
too many doubt is too soon is like the boxer going out against Mike Tyson, his first, you know, first professional fight. You know, it's like, man, you just set yourself up for a bad spot. But a little bit of doubt, it, it, you know, uncomfortableness helps you grow. You got to have something to fight against, something to kind of push against. And that makes you get stronger. So a little bit. A little bit. I like it. Scott Todd, what about you when you first started? Uh, how, how was it with, you know, do you have any doubters? No, you know, I think that, I think that, um, you know, basically I just said, Hey, this is what I'm going to go do. I'm going to try it. My wife's like, you know, try it, you know, just what, what's the worst that could happen? Just, you know, try a few. And so she, she's really good about, you know, that, that piece of it. I think that what happens though, is you, you know, it's so easy to talk yourself out of it. Your, your brain starts to tell you like, Oh, well, what, what makes you think this, or what makes you think that I had a boss once that uh, probably the greatest boss I ever had. And I, I remember I was asking him like, Hey, do you think I should apply for this you know, new, new role? Do you think, um, do you think I'd be a good candidate for that job? And basically he looked at me and he said, you are a candidate if you say you're a candidate. And that's kind of always stuck with me. Like, you know, no matter what you, what you are, you are what you say you are, you know, like if you say you're a land investor, well, then you're a land investor. If you say you're a real estate investor, then you, then you're a real estate investor. It doesn't mean that, you know, you have to fake it till you make it or whatever. You just have to kind of believe in yourself first, take some action and go do it. I think that, you know, what, where it gets hard is where you have external parties that, that are kind of uh, maybe fearful of your success, right? Like when, if, I mean, we, we you know, we know people, Mark, that, that um, you know, they'll, they'll tell us, well, my, my significant other, my spouse, whatever it is, you know, they're, they're very leery. It's, it's, it's twofold. One, it's because they don't want you to fail. They don't want to see you get upset, but I think it's also, or hurt. I think it's also sometimes people are afraid of success of other people because man, if you're successful in that, then that changes whatever dynamic we have uh, today. Because, you know, like uh, just imagine like, you know, you, you, you have a role in your family. Your wife has a role in her, in the family. And then all of a sudden she says, you know, Mark, I'm going to go do this thing. And, you know, I'm going to start this business. And, you know, you look at it and you're like, holy cow, man, that's going to change the whole dynamic of, like, of the family. Like if, I'm, if that happens, what happens to the relationship or the dynamic of the family? And I think that that's something that just has to be overcome, right? You just have to kind of continue to say, listen, this is why it's a good thing for us. This is what I'm working for. I'm working for us. This is, you know, it's, I'm, I'm going to be excited about this, but at the same time, this can open up all kinds of doors for us. It, it, yeah, it's, it's such a good point, isn't it? And, uh, you know, I've gone through it with my own, my own wife. Uh, and, you know, kind of a different thing was actually, uh, she's always been a stay-at-home, you know, mom. And, and then the kids are getting older. She's like, oh, you know, I want to go and I want to work at the paper source, like this retail store uh, in our area. And it's really nice. She loves the store. And I said, okay, you know, and I, and I was supportive, but then reality sets in and she's working nights. She's working weekends and she's missing the family and we're missing her. And it completely changes the dynamic to the point where like, okay, is this worth it? Right. What we're giving up, what are we getting? And we, we both determined, Hey, we're not getting enough to, for you to give up this much. And I think that in this business, what's beautiful about it is that you don't need to give anything up. What it does is it actually provides you that freedom and flexibility because you can do it from anywhere in the world. You don't need to go to uh, a, you know, a desk or a job or uh, any kind of other platform to do it. And it just becomes this machine. And then you, the dynamic actually, I think, can improve. But initially, I think it's the unknown. It's the fear. It's okay. We're investing in, you know, this land geek material and uh, is it going to work? Are we going to get a return on it? And then how much of this time are you going to take away from the family? And there's a lot of that. I think there's fear. I, th I think what you brought up was a really good point, Scott. There's fear of, of failure, but the, you know, just as equally fear of success and, and the, the, how that dynamic changes. Um, anything else you want to add to that? No, I mean, I, th I think that, I think you just have to like continue to, um, you just have to like continue to, um, you know, be open and transparent about what, what and why, why this is important to the family or why this is important to you. And then I think that uh, time, time kind of 
heals here heals all fears right like because as right. you start to go through it you start to be able to realize okay well this isn't as bad as what i thought it would be yeah the you know fears in life are always worse in your head than they are in reality i remember uh i had uh, a good friend of mine and uh you know he something happened i forgot what happened and for the longest time like we just didn't call each other and you know time's going by and then it because like you know you know like so much time goes by then it becomes like awkward it's like yeah. oh my gosh now we gotta like actually you know admit reality it's too much time has gone by and i was like oh you know and i, I think about you know you know reaching out and, and call and finally i just called and it was great it was like no time had passed and it was way worse in my head right i thought oh he's gonna make me feel guilty it's gonna be passive i mean none of that happened he was like he was just happy to, to hear from me and uh it was way worse in my head and i'm sure you know we can all have similar stories to that all right well we're at that point now mike zen master zeno for our tips of the week a website a resource a book a quote something actionable for the art of passing into listeners and go right now improve their businesses improve their lives what have you got are you asking me first? I am asking. You first. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of a weird intro. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, this is a wonderful time in New England. This is the time of the year where the leaves start falling down. So uh, I, you know, I'm I'm not the uh, I, my neighbors probably think I'm a little strange, but I don't mind. So one of the things that I love to do at this time of year is I go outside and I and I take a it's a like a bow can. It's a wooden sword, and you wait for the leaves to fall down. When the leaves fall down. When one comes your way, you simply just cut it. Now, it sounds easy, but it's really not because these leaves are pretty uh, unpredictable and you could stand over here, stand over there. But the idea is when you stand there, right, and you're relaxing and, you know, all the leaves start shaking and one comes your way and then finally it's the right place, right time and you cut it, you hit it and it's perfect. Well, to me, that reminds me, it's like, what does that relate to land investing? <laughs> Scott's like, how does this even play in? <laughs> it's the fact that people have all the, <laughs> look at them, all these issues with uh, when we come around like finding uh, you know land deals finding places to mail and they run here they run there and I could run all over the yard back and forth back and forth and not cut a single leaf but when you dig your heels in and you stay consistent and you take a deep breath and you relax the leaves come the deals come it's the same type of mentality you know you don't have to run over here look at so and so is doing deals over here let me run over there and run some mailings or over here when there's really a lot of really good areas that we can invest in, but you have to dig your heels in. You have to take a deep breath. You have to relax and you have to put the mailing out. And of course the marketing on the flip side, but I just think it correlates to that, you know, taking a deep breath, relaxing and not trying to like be bought left, right, all over the place, you know, trying to uh, hit everywhere where everybody else is going and compare yourself to them and say, well, I'm going to go do a deal there, do a deal here. It's like, no, dig in, take a deep breath, relax, the leaf will fall, the deals will come, and then that's the one you'll do. And then you can just repeat it again and again and again. So cutting leaves, that's, that's my tip of the week. I think it's a great tip. And I think, it, you know, we don't talk enough about the power of focus and the power of commitment and, and, and really just enjoying that process of, of, you know, letting it come to you and, and, you know, kind of being zen about it and cutting the leaf. And there's no better feeling. It's like, kind of, you know, hitting that sweet spot in the golf ball, right? It's like, oh, it's, how, it's so effortless when it happens. Um, and not pushing too hard, holding, holding that grip too tightly. Uh, great tip. Tate Litchfield, what's your tip of the week? All right. So I've got a, a quote from a book. Uh, the book, it's an older book. It's called The Secret Formula of the Wizard of Ads. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's a cool looking book. That is cool. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's by uh, a guy named Roy H. Williams. And it's an older book. I think it's from like uh, 1999. But I found it and I was, you know, spending some time trying to make my, my marketing campaign a little bit better. And so as I was reading through it, it's a really good read. And you can actually find the PDF online and you can basically read it in maybe a couple hours. But there's one part of the book that really stuck out to me. And it was a section on what to leave out. And in this section, uh, the author talks about leaving out key pieces of information on your marketing. And this is something Scott, you know, talks about all the time. And the quote from the book is, uh, what will you leave out of your ads so that the imagination of the customer is engaged? What will you leave out of your ads so the imagination of the customer is nice. engaged? I'm going to put that as like a little sticky on, uh, 
on the wall here. That's a great quote. Yeah, and it's it's definitely applicable, right? Like we talk about leaving the duration of your uh, of your terms pricing out, or actually leaving the pricing out, or talking about the property in such a way that people think, ah, you know, I've I've always wanted a place up in the mountains, right? I've always wanted a getaway that only I knew about. So it's definitely something that we can apply to our business and you know, ask yourself, what can you leave out of your ad so that people will have to contact you? It's kind of a cool concept. It's worked for me lately. Um, check out the book, The Secret Formulas of the Wizard of Ads. Great tip. Uh, you know, it's, you know, Eric Peterson, it's going to be hard to, uh, to follow up on those guys, but let's give you a shot. What is your tip of the week? That's exactly what I was thinking. So, uh, yeah, I'm feeling uh, pretty ashamed of my tip today. Um, it's actually called Today. It's an iPhone app. Uh, you can check the chat. I'll put a link in there. Um, so it's a, you know, habit um, kind of forming app. It's, you know, we've, we've talked about different versions of, of this type of app before. Um, but uh, today this one caught my attention as I was sitting in car line to, to pick up my son from school early today. And, uh, you know, it, it's kind of like uh, momentum for Chrome in the sense that it's um, very visual, um, but it allows you to set up your habits, whether that's exercise or mailing and marketing or what have you. And then um, you can see your streaks and you can set different cards and things like that of, um, different pieces to track. Um, but you know, nothing we haven't seen before, just, just a different look at it. Well, I mean, you know, the graphic designer, I can see why, why you would like this because like I use streaks, this is way more elegant than, than streaks. I mean, this is, this is beautiful. To, I like to be it. honest. It's visual. I like visual. It's very visual. Uh, yeah. but if you're spending like 10 minutes to log all this activity, I mean, yeah, you, you really don't. You just m go in there and you mark that you did whatever that task was. So you're not, you're not putting in a lot of specifics. Oh, so you're not posting the pictures and that kind of thing. I don't, the setup, I don't know if you're actually adding those photos. I haven't set any up. Like I said, I, I literally downloaded this while I was in car line today. Okay. Um, but, uh, but I watched this nice little intro video and, uh, you know, I thought it looked nice. Um, if you have to put those photos in, I mean, there might, might, there might be some stock ones in there. Maybe there's not, I'm not sure. Yeah. But you know what I like about this Tate? It says allow multiple check-ins per day. So cool. you might, you could do a lot with that. Absolutely. Um, this is, you know what? I was really looking forward to ripping on that tip, but um, it's, it's not, it's really a good tip actually except maybe he was downloading it while driving i was taking a little issue with that but no 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 he no, was no, in the car I was, line oh, i was sitting okay. in car oh, line oh, oh, right. that like okay. the, that's where you pick the kids up yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, okay you'll get there soon you'll get there soon don't worry <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i was looking in the carpool yeah, lane safety, like eric. driving <laughs> i'm looking no, out no. for your safety eric that's all i was concerned i appreciate it <laughs> uh scott todd what's your tip of the week well, you know, like I, in defense of Mike, like I want to, I, I want to say that Mike, I, when you were talking about standing there, like slicing the leaves, <laughs> I saw you disappear. You couldn't. The take reason, it. the reason I started <laughs> laughing was because I was thinking, like in Florida, I would be standing outside like an for, idiot like, for a very long period of time waiting for the leaves to fall because it, uh, it, it's like come to England. We got sweet bread and leaves. Yeah. So, you know, it wasn't, I, I like your analogy. I like the way you were thinking. I had to like set the record straight because, you know, where I am, I'm like, yep, the leaves are still there. They're not falling. <laughs> okay. So anyway, Mark, I, as you know, I'm a big, um, big believer in kind of ownership, taking ownership, extreme ownership. Um, you know, I just, I just believe that when you're leading a team and, um, you know, you have other people that are kind of reporting to you that ultimately the buck stops with you, you know, like that's really what I think. And, uh, I downloaded a book and, uh, you know, you can check it out on Amazon. It's called extreme ownership. Oh, I by, bought that book. Jocko. Yeah. Jocko. I love Jocko. And, uh, you know, Jocko is, 
um, kind of a former Navy SEAL. It's extreme ownership, how the U.S. Navy SEALs lead and win. And, you know, if, if, if you're looking for kind of that motivation, you know, that, that thing to get you going, if you're looking for someone to help show you the way as to what, what do true leaders, uh, what are the skill sets or the, the, the mindsets that's, that true leaders have, this is, this is the book that you need to download, listen to. I love it. Yeah, I, and he's got a great podcast as well. He does, If yeah. you haven't heard his he's interview intense. with Tim Ferriss, uh, it was his first interview, and Tim Ferriss sort of uh, launched this guy uh, on his podcast. And he's, I mean, this guy is like amazing what he's done and yeah, leading intense. the SEAL teams. And, <laughs> and you know, he, he's incredible. Um, that's a great tip. Great tip. Uh, my tip of the week is arguably not as great as everybody else's tips, but I'm going to say that it's, you know, you come across these books that are sort of mind benders. Like think of a mind bender book. I, I'll tell you what, like uh, the first mind bender book I think I've ever read was Rich Dad, Poor Dad, where it made me think in a different way about assets, liabilities, real estate. It was motivational. Um, I think of another mind bender book as, uh, you know, the one thing, uh, or the power of now, um, these, you know, uh, homo sapiens or sapiens, homo deus, these are mind bender books. And this book that I'm just now reading is one of those. It's called some 40 tales from the afterlives by David Eagleman. And I'll just read to you what it's about. Um, you know, at once funny, wistful, and unsettling, some is a dazzling exploration of unexpected afterlives, each presented as a vignette that offers a stunning lens through which to see ourselves in the here and now. In one afterlife, you may find that God is the size of a microbe and unaware of your existence. In another version, you work as a background character in other people's dreams. Or you may find that God is a married couple or that the universe is running backward or that you are forced to live out your afterlife with annoying versions of who you could have been. With a probing imagination, deep understanding of the human condition, acclaimed neuroscientist David Eagleman offers wonderfully imagined tales that shine a brilliant light on the here and now. And then I'm reading it. It, it really does. It is a phenomenal, phenomenal, easy read, uh, easy books, like 140 pages. But these little vignettes, all 40 of them are mind benders and, uh, and bring you into the here and now in a, in a way that you might not be able to get in, in, you know, without some type of external kind of push. Um, that might be like a, you know, like a crisis or something. So check that book out. Uh, I think everybody will, will like it. I'm just bought I'm it. really enjoying it. And then getting back to uh, Eric Peterson, uh, today's phenomenal. Like the cover, I'm doing covers right now on the app. This is so much better looking than streaks. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you guys know how hard it is for me to give Eric a compliment on his tip of the week. This is a really good tip. Um, so I thought this was a, a great podcast. Are we good guys? Yeah, we're, we're good, good, Mark. Yeah. yeah. I was going to give Eric another compliment too. Is okay. No, we can wait, wait till next <laughs> week. Well, actually he's make me feel uncomfortable because look how good his hair looks. It's like, he's perfect. Like, I feel like I got to comb my hair before the podcast now. Look at him. He's just like perfectly. <laughs> Yes, Tate, yours looks good too. But I mean, look at look at Eric. Look at him. He's just I got know, the perfect wave to it. I feel. I, how many people watch this? On how many people listen to it? What's the percentage? I I don't know, but this bromance is making me awkward. <laughs> I feel awkward here. I just feel a little like I got to get a haircut by the next uh, round table. What's gonna happen? <laughs> <laughs> or some gel. Right, gel. right. This kind of reminds me of that uh, that scene in Anchorman. You know what I'm talking about? Where, where, Champ, is it, where Champ wants to go live with Ron Burgundy. Ron Burgundy. Yeah. So is Eric Ron Burgundy? Eric is Ron Burgundy in this scenario. <laughs> and Champ's like, I think we should get an apartment and move in together. And then the guys are like, maybe ne take the next playoff, Champ. Eric the Anchorman Peterson. There it is. Oh, boy. All right. I want to uh, thank all the listeners. Just remind everybody, if you're enjoying the, the roundtables, hopefully you're getting a lot of good information, but also entertained as well. Um, please leave us a review. Subscribe, rate, review the podcast. Send a screenshot of that review to support at thelanggeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit. Uh, again, today's podcast is sponsored by geekpay.io. 
Uh, check that out. Get your first note for free at thelandgeek.com forward slash geek pay. We'll have links to all of this. And uh, Scott, are you ready? Let's go, Mark. Ready? One, one, two, two three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Yikes. That was good. That was really good. Was it good? It was good. The problem is, the problem is I look at everybody's lips and then I try to catch up. And you got to listen. Close your eyes and listen. That's what I need to do. I just need yeah. to not, not pay attention. Yeah. Yes. Scott, is it unsettling that I'm not ripping on Eric now? No, no, not really. I mean, you, I, 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 I have to tell you, I, re- I mean, I'm honest. I really like the app. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's made it to the other side. Yeah, he's, he's in the Let's circle. Let's not go now. crazy. He hasn't made it to the other side. Come on. <laughs> It's too much attention. I mean, you got look. He had a nice tip of the week. Sometimes, uh, you know, a blind squirrel finds a nut. Like, let's not go crazy here. All right, a broken clock is right once a day. Uh, you know, but no, I, I, I thought uh, I thought this was a good podcast for sure. What, uh, Tate? Are you going for lunch now? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where we're going. I got to go talk with the missus. Oh, nice. Are you going to bring, bring the baby or are you going to bring yeah. it home for it? Here's the thing. You have to bring that baby with you everywhere you go. All the time. Like I always got to bring her. It's like I a ticking to, time bomb at the restaurant. I have to babysit on Thursday. I'll let you guys know how it goes. For, wait, oh, first of all, you're the dad. You can't say I'm babysitting on Thursday. Okay. <laughs> the dads don't get to say that. I'm ba- like, oh, I'm babysitting. I hope Allison gives me a tip when she gets home. I worked really hard with the baby. <laughs> Uh, it's exhausting, man. And I, I look, I know baby time is slow time, man. It is. But it's, it's fun time. It's fun. No, it's great. It's the best. Uh, yeah. Mike, how was universal? Oh, we had a great time. Had a really good time. Except I'm not really good at any of the spinning things anymore. Those I'm kind of so like getting old, oh, huh? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I can't do this. I, it's all about the Dramamine. Do you take a Dramamine? No, no. I, I, I went on Spider-Man. I was like, uh, you, no, Harry Potter. That was it. And that, oh, I was almost yeah. done for the day. I was like, okay, yeah. I almost just got that beer they give you. That, what is it, a butter beer? Yeah, the butter I, beer. I had that before the ride. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, yeah, so I, I was I, – because I did Universal this summer and took and did that same ride. I mean, I was popping Dramamine like they were Tic Tacs. Like, <laughs> yeah. it, it was the only way that I saved the day. Like, it was so tough. That, those are tough rides. I'll tell you, never again without a fast pass. That was incredible. I felt so rude cutting everybody. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, we're going this way. <laughs> oh, yeah, the fast pass is the best. I got to run, guys. Oh, everybody's live. All right. Thanks, guys. Scott, too. See everybody. ya. See ya.